Hi, it's Steve. In this video, we'll show you how to disassemble a Whirlpool built front control dryer. This dryer may be also sold under brand names such as Kenmore, Maytag, Amana, Admiral, and others. We'll show you where the most common parts are and the easiest way to access those. Although this video shows the general disassembly procedure for this dryer, if you have a specific part that you're looking to replace, simply visit our website and using your model number, search for that part and we may have a specific repair video just for you. Now the first step in the disassembly of this style of dryer will be the main top. With the main top removed, we have access to our control board as well as access to our user interface control on the front. To remove the top, we need access to the back of the dryer to remove the screws that secure the top to the cabinet. Simply need to remove these three screws across the top. With the screws removed, simply grasp the sides of that top and pull it back about a half to three quarters of an inch. That will unhook some tabs at the front and we can just lift it right off. Now with the main top removed, we have access to our main control board, our inlet power cord connections. We have access to our door switch circuit through this plug, as well as our sensor circuit that attaches to that main control board. Next to the control board is some troubleshooting information specifically for your model. Now the next thing that we'll want to look at is the user controls. These are contained in the console and to remove that we'll need to separate it from the front of the dryer. To do so, we'll need to remove typically about three screws across the top. You may also need to remove one of the screws at the back that secures that main control board housing. And then check in behind to see if there are any screws on the face at the back of that support piece. In this case, we do have one located in there. As well, we'll want to check and see if there are any wires coming from the user interface controls that attach to the main control board and we'll need to separate those as well. Now on models that use this style of a shroud around the door, you'll need to separate that from the control housing first. There are a series of metal spring type pins in behind the shroud that attach it to the front panel and then some plastic clips across the top. So to remove it, we'll just lift up gently on the top of that, and detach it from the main control housing and you may wish to use either a putty knife or just gently pull on that shroud all the way around. If you use a putty knife, it's a good idea to cover it with some painter's tape or something like that so that you don't damage the finish on your front panel. Use caution when removing this piece so that we don't damage it. Then we can set that aside. Now, although it is possible to separate that control housing from this metal bracket, it's actually easier to leave it intact. But to remove that, we'll need to lift out the main control board housing. So just lift it up on the back, disengage the tab from the front, and you can just lay that on the drum. So with that control board housing out of the way, we're next just gonna lift up on either corner of these metal brackets. That will disengage the bottom of the control housing from the top of the front panel. We'll lift that straight up and remove it from the dryer. Now next we'll look at what's behind this lower access panel. It's held in place with two screws, one in either corner, just under the bottom edge. And just tilt out on that panel, allow it to drop down. Now that will give us access to our heater circuit located off on the right. Although there's not much that you can change until you remove that front panel, you could at least do some troubleshooting on the thermostats and the thermal fuse located on that. You also have some access to our blower housing and blower wheel located behind this air inlet duct. To remove it, we would simply take out these two screws slide the lint filter out from the inside, and then we can pull that housing away. That also gives you better access to our regulating thermistor located on the blower housing. 
as well as the thermal fuse located on that blower housing. Now our next step will be to remove the front panel and that will give us access to our motor, belt, drum, and drum rollers. To do that, we first of all need to disconnect some harnesses. We'll separate the harness for the door switch and we'll also remove the harnesses for the, the moisture sensor connector and the thermostat or temp sensor connector. And then just rotate that control board housing out of the way. And we'll also need to release the harness connector from the cabinet. Simply depress the arrowhead fastener and allow that to hang loose. Now before we remove that assembly, we will also point out that if you're replacing either of the door strikes, either the lower one or the upper one, we simply need to open the door to do that, depress those with a pair of pliers and pull them out. If you're replacing the door gasket, we can simply do that without removing the door. If you're replacing the catches, either top or bottom, you may wish to take the door completely off of the dryer. To do so, there are a series of screws that secure that hinge to the front panel. We simply need to remove those screws, lift the door off, and then you can do that repair. Our next step will be to make sure that this harness is free. On most of these models, that harness runs through between the front panel and the bulkhead and is secure inside. So we'll need to separate it from this end. So remove the terminals from the temp sensor or cycling thermostat as well as the ground screw. Verify that that harness is loose. Below the bottom edge of that front panel on either side, there is a quarter inch hex head screw. We simply need to remove both of those. Now with the bottom screws removed, we simply need to loosen these two top ones as they use a keyhole slot. So just loosen them a few turns. Now next we'll want to put this control board housing out of the way. There's typically enough harness there that you can just lean it out over the side without causing any excess strain on it. Then we'll lift up on that whole front panel door assembly, keeping in mind that you're also trying to lift up the drum at the same time, so there'll be some resistance there. Simply lift up on the drum, lift it away from the drum rollers. Now that gives us access to replace either of these drum rollers. Now all that remains is to gain access to the motor, the idler, belt, and rear drum rollers. We first need to remove the tension from that belt as it wraps around the drum, around the idler pulley, and then around the motor pulley. So to release it, we'll have to reach in from both sides, release the tension on the idler, then slide the belt off of the motor pulley. Once you locate the idler pulley, we're simply going to push it to the left. That releases the tension on the belt. Then roll it off of the motor pulley. Allow the idler to come back to the right. We release the tension. We'll use that belt to lift the drum out. Lift it off the rear drum rollers. You may need to spread that cabinet a bit to get it out through the front. And then you can set the drum aside. That also gives us access to both rear and front felts should they need to be replaced. Now with the drum removed, we have clear access to all the components that are attached to the base. Our idler pulley and bracket, which is actually mounted on the back of the motor housing. Our motor pulley also gives us access to replace our blower wheel. It is attached directly to the motor shaft, which has one flat side on it, so we would use a wrench to secure the motor shaft and then a half inch square drive to remove the blower from the front. We also have access to our rear drum rollers and access to completely remove that heater housing from the air inlet duct at the back. Thank you so much for watching this video. We certainly hope that it was helpful to you. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.